All right. That gets us to our speaker. Steve, I know you're glad to hear that. Uh, Y'all doing fine. <laughs> uh, I met Steve uh, last week at the SCV meeting. I met with him, and he's a real integral part of that association, that organization. And I'm going to read what Steve sent me. I'm Steve Hewlin, and I was raised in western Sampson County, just outside of Salemburg. We moved here when I was seven years old, after my father retired from the U.S. Air Force. I graduated from Lakewood High School in the class of 1980. I've worked in the furniture retail business in Sampson and surrounding counties for 30 years. Presently reside in Salemburg and have one living son, Matthew, who will be 25 in June. He's a nursing student at Georgia Southwestern State University in America's Georgia. Uh, I'm presently employed with Clinton Appliance and Furniture Company where I'm the billing manager. And he says, don't let titles fool you. I'm active in the sons, with the Sons of Confederate Veterans and serve not only as camp commander of the Mingo Militia in Spivish Corner, but as brig brigade commander for the Southeast Brigade. The Southeast Brigade covers six counties, which are Brunswick, Columbus, Duplin, New Hanover, Pender, and Sampson. Without further ado, Steve, come and share with us. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate y'all asking me. I, uh, I think y'all out of speakers. That's the only reason I got an invitation. And when I'm finished, Carlisle will already attest to this that you, I'm right on what I'm saying. But uh, I am honored to be here. It's always nice to be able to share your passion with somebody else that has similar interest as you do. So uh, I've got a few things. I do want to bring you greetings from Sampson County. I know that down here in Duplin County, there's a lot of concern for the last couple of hundred years about what would happen with Sampson County once they separated from Duplin County. Let me advise you that we do have paved roads in Sampson County. We do have lots of industry along with agriculture. Uh, we grow, still grow a lot of tobacco there, and corn and beans and other uh, things. We raise livestock. Um, we are educated in Sampson County for the most part. Most of our uh, leaders and politicians can all read and write now. I was uh, <laughs> recently sitting in the barber shop and I heard somebody sitting there reading the Sampson Independent and they were reading where some young man had uh, paid his, the supreme sacrifice in uh, Afghanistan recently and they said, yeah, I heard he had gotten killed and they said, it didn't say he got killed, said he paid the supreme sacrifice. So that really wasn't funny, but anyway, I threw it in there anyway. So, but uh, anyhow, uh, but I am from Sampson County, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, as when you're an Air Force brat, you when you finally get someplace that you call your home base, you're proud of where you're at. That's that's the way it is. Cause we traveled first part of my life very much, and uh, was from uh, Canada to California to Mississippi, and finally in North Carolina. So this is home to me. Uh, but I've come to talk about the Sons of Confederate Veterans and who they were, what they were, and uh, the, um, the name of the organization of itself kind of tells you about the time period that we, uh, we're talking about here. And there's some very misinformation going around, especially today, as Historians and people who follow history and, and research history, you understand that a lot of times history is left up to the interpretation of the individual. Patrick Claiborne, who was a general, lieutenant general in the Confederate Army, who was actually a Irish immigrant who came here, and uh, he said, surrender means that the history of this heroic struggle will be written by the enemy, that our youth will be trained by northern school teachers, will learn from northern school books their version of the war. 
will be impressed upon impressed by all the influence of history and education to regard our gallant deed as traitors and our main veterans as fit subjects for desertion. In the after years after the war, it was kind of forbidden for soldiers to gather together. Men were not allowed to gather as easily as women did. So if you go around to some of the counties and you look at some of the monuments around, you'll see that the United Daughters of the Confederacy erected a lot of monuments because they could meet, but the men were not allowed to meet. Years later, after they claimed that they, they had done away with Reconstruction, they claimed that they did away with Reconstruction, uh, the men began to meet, and they met in local groups and eventually began meeting in larger associations and groups and they became what is known today as the United Confederate Veterans. Okay? That organization no longer exists due to the fact that the, uh, um, well, the last Confederate soldier died in like 1948 or 49, somewhere along there, I think. It might have been a little later than that. But uh, anyway, um, they had about 1,555 camps that, uh, that represented them at the reunion in 19, or 1898. Uh, the next few years marked the zenith of the UCV membership, uh, and that continued to grow until about 1904 when veterans started dying off and the organization went into a gradual decline. Now, you think now, here it is, it's 1890s, it's 25 years after the war, these men, uh, some of these men were old by soldier standpoint. By, if you compare them to soldiers, they were old for their age to be even soldiers because some of them were 30 and 40 years old. Now, that doesn't sound old to most of us, but uh, it, uh, if you're a soldier, 40 years old <laughs> as a private is an old age. Uh, it's not like being an 18, 19-year-old young man finishing up boot camp. It's very different for you. It um, so, but they got together and they were they were getting older and they would bring their families. A lot of the national uh, they would always have a national reunion. We still do that today. They would have a national reunion, and they would they'd be thirty thousand so uh, veterans there, and they may bring fifty thousand or more people with them. Okay, uh, in doing so, they. Uh, in the uh, 1911, they estimated a crowd of 106,000 members and guests crammed into the town of Little Rock, Arkansas, a city less than one half that size. So they doubled, they more than doubled the population of Little Rock, Arkansas for several days as they and the towns would compete. Every year, you know, it was like, we're going to put on the, the best convention they've had, the best reunion they've had. We're going to be bigger. We're going to do, if, if Richmond had it the last year and Little Rock had it this year, R Little Rock was going to outdo Richmond. Memphis was going to outdo Little Rock. Everybody was going to be bigger and better, and that's the way it was. It was a great festival. They'd be parades in the streets. If you go back and look in your archives, you see these things. The uh, in addition to the national meetings, other prominent factor contributed to, to the growth and popularity of the UCV. This was a monthly magazine, which uh, became the official UCV organ, the Confederate Veteran. It was founded as an independent publication uh, in January of 1893 by Summer Archibald Cunningham. Uh, the UCV adopted it the following year, and Cunningham personally edited the magazine for 21 years and bequeathed uh, almost his entire estate to ensure its continuance. And I can tell you today, I, I brought some of my copies here with me. Sorry, Bill. But I did bring a few of my copies with me of uh, past issues, uh, if you'd like to look at them. But we do continue today to uh, publish the Confederate veteran. And there's great articles in here, uh, stories about things 
in the past and things happening around the Confederacy today. The Sons of Confederate Veterans is the direct descendant or of this right here. As I said a while ago, they would bring their family members um, we're, we're, um, to the uh, reunions because as the soldiers got older, it's more difficult for them to get around. They needed more assistance. You had a lot of, you had a lot of men who were missing arms and legs and things right here, so they needed assistance even early on. And their sons would come with them, and they would help them around uh, the conventions, around town, getting them in and out of the hotel rooms, getting them to meals and things right here. And they started building a camaraderie uh, amongst themselves. And by 1896, the Sons of Confederate Veterans was born. Now, North Carolina, we say we are first, furthest, foremost because of our participation in the war. We still claim that title today because in North Carolina, our division here for the Sons of Confederate Veterans, we are first in a lot of things going on in the SCV. We were the first state to get a monument protection bill. What's going on in Charlottesville, Virginia right now? What's going on in uh, Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana right now cannot happen in North Carolina because we had our General Assembly pass a monument protection bill. All monuments in North Carolina on public land are protected by this bill, regardless of who they are for. Okay? They, um, it's to protect our history. We, uh, we have been first in a lot of things throughout. We meet regularly. We have our reunion. Uh, a lot of things that we're doing in our state today, the other, member, other divisions in the uh, SCV and even our general headquarters in Elm Springs, uh, Tennessee, they want to emulate. And that's a great honor to be emulated when you're doing something good. Okay? One of the things we have started is our North Carolina Heritage Pack. Now the Heritage Pack is something that you as an organization or members of this organization here uh, of your Duplin County Historical Society can contribute to. What it does is it allows us, because we are a 501c3 organization, just like you are, we cannot tell one another openly in a meeting who to vote for, okay? But we still, we didn't give up our rights to vote when we joined organizations like the Sons of Confederate Veterans or the Duplin County Historical Society. We did not give up our citizenship. We did not give up our right to vote. We still get to vote for people we want to vote for. We vote, hopefully, with information that we've gathered from uh, about the candidates that are available for us to choose on our ballots. Okay? I had a high school teacher who said the most dangerous person to America today is an uneducated voter. And I, so last year we started an organization, a separate entity of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. It's called the North Carolina Heritage Pack. They are a 501B organization. They take donations, and they research our, pol our politicians. They research candidates for state offices, and they send that information to us so we can make our decision how we want to vote. And they support different campaigns and things right here, and they give a report of that there. This is something that we can join together in as, as like-minded organizations. But the SCV not only does that, we do other things in our community. One of the things we do is we reach out to local junior ROTC programs uh, in the high schools. We have what we call the H.L. Hunley Award that is given out to an underclassman uh, in a junior ROTC program. 
and that is, for those of you who don't know, if you've not been a part of that, it's the Junior Reserved Officers Training Corps. It's in a lot of the high schools. I know that James Keenan has one, and so does Wallace Rose Hill. I don't know about the North Duplin or East Duplin, but I do know they do. That, I'm sorry? East Duplin does have one. Okay. I thought they did, but I won't for sure. And, uh, but we reach out to those organizations. We allow the command for the Junior ROTC to uh, select the student. We present them with the award. It's a beautiful award, but it's for leadership. It's for an underclassman who shows leadership in their, organ in their organization. Um, another thing we do is we recognize graves that have been abandoned of Confederate soldiers. We go in, we clean those graves, we maintain them, and give them the respect and honor that they deserve. The, um, we also take and um, protect our monuments. We take and we clean monuments. We do memorial services around and try to educate. Our biggest purpose is to educate the public about the time period between 1861 and 1865. As I said, there are people who, um, who have been taught wrongly about that time period, and that's what they believe. If you want to find research, you want to find research on people who were living close to the times. If you were going to want to know about George Washington, would you read a book that was written by somebody that knew George Washington personally, or would you read a book I wrote? I mean, which one do you think would be more accurate? The personal one. Those are the things we have to look at. And um, we, uh, we recognize some, we do have a few, actually, believe this or not, there are some living children still of Confederate veterans over 150 years after the war. They um, are um, far, few and far between. Last year I was... Uh, honored to be able to go to Smithfield. We honored a lady there whose father was a Confederate veteran. She's now in her 90s. He married uh, late in life, had her, and uh, he passed away when she was very young. Uh, she, did, she told me, she said, I really don't remember much about my father except that he was very old and that he passed away when I was very little. And she said, I really don't understand all the um, attention I'm getting today, but I'm glad to have it. But uh, she was, uh, she was, but you know, to meet people though that that had contact with somebody that far back, to me, that is great. You know, that that's an awesome thing. Um, I want to read something. I promised, I promised Carlisle. Carlisle's uh, past commander of the um, uh, Kenansville Arsenal Camp, North Carolina Arsenal Camp at Kenansville, and. Uh, he tells me I get long-winded sometimes is what he sends me in his email. So I promised him I was going to try to make three points, where we came from, who we are, what we do. Okay, and I hope I made that. But I'm going to close this right here, and it's a, I didn't write this, it was, and I'll tell you at the end who wrote it. But it says, why I am a member of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Because I have a deep sense of loyalty to my family. And that especially includes my great-grandfather, who was a private in the Confederate Army. With no hope of recognition except that his sacrifice would be remembered by his family, gave his life in defense of his country, his home, and those who would come after him. Because I believe in the promise of the man of Galilee, of life after death, as my great-grandfather looks down upon me from the Valhalla, of Confederate heroes. I want him to know that I am not ungrateful. That I remember and honor his bravery and sacrifice because I have so much to be proud of in the Confederate Army. His brilliant fight under conditions of extreme privation against any army, any any enemy overwhelming in numbers and equipment so won the admiration of the world that a hundred years later, a group of retired British Army and Navy officers organized the Confederate Historical Society of Great Britain, headquartered in London. <laughs> 
to study its campaigns. In 1874, a group of Belgians organized the Confederate Historical Society of Belgium based in Brussels for the same reason and purpose. The Southern Skirmishes Association in England reenacts battles of the war. Some members have to wear the blue, but typical of the sentiment is one sturdy English Confederate who told a reporter, one Southern fighting man was worth two Yankees. I would never be anything but a Southerner. No other army in history has been paid such a tribute by foreigners over a century after the war in which it was engaged. Are foreigners to admire and honor the valor, valor, valor of the Confederate soldier and my family while I remain indifferent? Because I love the South and I am proud to be a Southerner, I am proud of the culture, grace, and elegance of the Old South, of the heritage of courage, honor, chivalry, respect for womanhood, patriotism, and of duty to God and country. I love the Confederate flag and Dixie as stirring symbols of that heritage. I take pride in the earlier leading role the Old South played in the Revolutionary War, the drafting of the Constitution and the founding of the United States. I love the Star Spangled Banner and the flag of the United States, and I served under the flag in World War II because our Southern heritage has served our nation well since 1865. No section has surpassed the South in percentage of volunteers to defend our country in time of war. And the South and the Southern people who lost everything in the war and without government aid had to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps traditionally adhere to the free enterprise system with its liberty and opportunity for all as opposed to the dictatorship of the welfare state with its liberty and opportunity for none because even today some of our school books, movies, television programs, and press falsely portray Southerners as rebels and traitors who fought to preserve slavery, misleading our children and millions of Americans, ignorant of history since my family fought for the Confederacy. They thereby falsely malign my family and me because there are even those who would ban as offensive the playing of Dixie and the display of the Confederate flag for which so many Southerners shed their blood, who fought dismantle all monuments to our Confederate dead, who would erase all honor to Jefferson David, Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, Nathan Bedford Forrest, Wade Hampton, Jeb Stewart, and all our other Southern heroes. Their purpose is to destroy our proud heritage, as Winston Churchill said. Any people with content for their heritage have lost faith in themselves, and no nation can no long, can long survive without a pride in its traditions. Our enemies know this at the same time of the movement to ban the display of the Confederate flag during the Vietnam War. We saw our American flag spat upon, burned, and the flag of the enemy nation with whom we were at war paraded through the streets of our nation's capital because I intend to defend my family's honor and remember the sacrifice of my great-grandfather, Wilson I. L. Dykes, private in the Confederate Army, and because it is my patriotic duty to my country, I belong to the Sons of Confederate Veterans, a respected, nonpartisan, patriotic organization dedicated to preserving our Southern heritage for ourselves, our children, our children's children, and to seeing that the history of the Confederate States of America and the war fought in its defense is truthfully recorded. I should also add that my membership is a pleasure because through the program at SCV meetings, I have become much better informed about the most fascinating war in our history. And through SCV social activities, I have made many warm friendships both locally and all over the country. Those of us who belong to the Sons of Confederate Veterans do so in testimony of our love, recalling deeds of mortal heroism unsurpassed. With ranks unbroken, ragged, starved, and disseminated, 
The southern soldier, for duty's sake, undaunted, stood to the front of the battle until no light remained to illumine the field of carnage. Save the luster of his chivalry and courage. We are determined that your glory be not forgot as long as fame at her records keep. January 1979, Dean Boggs, Kirby Smith Camp, number 1209, Sons of Confederate Veterans, Jacksonville, Florida. He made comment that there are people who believe that the Southern soldiers and their leaders were traitors to the United States. I have a quote here. If you bring these Confederate leaders to trial, it will condemn the North. For by the Constitution, secession is not rebellion. Lincoln wanted Davis to escape, and he was right. His capture was a mistake, and his trial would be a greater one. Chief Justice Salmon P. Chase, July 1867. We are a patriotic organization. We are non-political, but our political opponents have opposed us. Therefore, we do have to make a stand. Steve, can I add some points? Yes, sir. First of all, the war was not about slavery, it was about taxes. Secondly, <clears throat> the Emancipation Proclamation only freed the slaves in the South, in the rebellious states. It did not free, free the slaves in the North. Uh, thirdly, uh, Nancy Lee's uh, husband was a grandson of a Confederate veteran. Um, uh, the reason the Emancipation Proclamation came about was because Lincoln was afraid that the Europe was going to come in on the side of the South, and so he had to do something about that. That is so true. Now, place of, and as he said about the, um, Carlos mentioned about the Emancipation Proclamation, places like most of Tennessee and New Orleans that were held by federal troops, those slaves were not freed. West Virginia, which was legally made a state because the Constitution says that you cannot make a state out of another state without the consent of the General Assembly of that state, and Lincoln threw the Constitution out, uh, not once, but throughout his entire administration, he never consulted the, the Constitution. It was not important to him. He created the state, a slave state, of West Virginia. The Emancipation Proclamation was put into effect in January of 1863. In June of 1863, West Virginia was made a slave state in the United States. Give you an idea. That's the importance of history, and we're talking about history here in this group, and the importance of that in terms of the context of Duplin County history. You need to know your history. Tell, tell us the motto of the SAD of your uh, camp there, Kingsville. Uh, the, the motto of the uh, Kingsville Armory uh, Camp is truth needs no defense, therefore the cause remains. I really like that. I, I love that because it, it speaks volumes about what we're doing. It is about the truth. And no matter how we like the truth, we can't change it. It's always true. I think it was Carlisle heard say one time that if a lie is told and everybody believes the lie and the truth is told and nobody believes the truth, the truth is still the truth. Okay, it's still the truth. It still happened. Truth is truth if nobody believes it and falsehood is false if everybody believes it. So, um, along with my magazine I brought today, I brought some brochures about the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Is anybody here besides Carlisle, have a Confederate ancestor? You think you do. Has your family been in, in this area for more than like four generations? Yes, they were from uh, Georgia and Clark. 
They were from Georgia and Florida. Well, darling, let me tell you something. I promise you, you've got a Confederate granddaddy somewhere in your tree. Okay? I promise you. And you might have eight or ten or twelve. <laughs> Your great grandfather, okay. So, um, I'm going to use this as recruiting time now. All right. If you have a son or grandson or nephew, they can join under your ancestor. If you're sitting here today, and if you're a male descendant, 12 years of age or older, you are eligible for membership in the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Okay, we are allowed, I saw you go out, I didn't know you came back in, I won't pay attention when you came back in, Mr. Fountain. Mr. Fountain's also a member of the Kingsville camp, and I'm glad to have him here. He's a, he's a fine asset to that camp, and he's been out for several months. We're, we're glad he's back and been able to join them over there again. But um, we, um, we do extend an invitation. If you've got a child who is under the age of 12, he can be a cadet, all right? And we do have organizations for women, okay? So we do have that there. We have the uh, Order of Confederate Roses. There, uh, there's also the, the Black Roses. There's uh, UDC, the United Daughters Confederacy. There used to be a chapter of that here in Duplin County, I believe, at one time, but there's not any longer. There was actually a chapter in each major town of this one county at one time. Okay. So that could be brought back um, if you're interested in doing something along those lines. But we'll lose our southern heritage. We'll lose our history if we do not pass this down to the next generation. Ronald Reagan said that we're only a generation away from losing democracy. We're only a generation away of losing our southern heritage. Remember I said that. We're a generation away from losing our southern heritage. Does anyone have any questions? I, I have a comment. Yes, ma'am. And whenever you uh, were telling about what you raised in Sampson County. Yes, ma'am. The crops, you left out the watermelons. Oh, we do have some watermelons. <laughs> Sen <laughs> Senator Jackson has some of the biggest watermelons I've seen in, uh, in the county. Senator, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'll be sure to tell them. Go to Saxon County just to get them. Just to get them. All right. Um, <laughs> we have some big. I, I tell you, I thought tobacco was going to be gone a few years ago, and it's uh, it's bigger and bigger and more productive now than it's ever been in Sampson County. Um, some big farmers out there in the contract with the tobacco companies, but uh, you know there was a time I told somebody we used to take and. In this area of the country, we wanted every man, woman, and child to dip, smoke, or chew a half acre a day. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but we don't do that anymore. But uh, anyhow, let me close this right here. This is where we stand. This is what we do. This is why we do what we do. Um, General Stephen Dill Lee addressed the... Uh, 1916 and 1906, 1906 reunion in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. And he said, to you, sons of Confederate veterans, we will commit the vindication of the cause for which we fought. To your strength will be given the defense of the Confederate soldier's good name. The guardianship of his history the emulation of his virtues and the perpetuation of those principles which he loved and which you love also, and those ideals which made him glorious and which you also cherish. That's why we do what we do in the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Thank you. I appreciate you.